Hi class, uh, good morning. Welcome to our week 7 topic. And uh, our topic is all about adjustment and corrections for magnetic compass and gyro compass and also the, the use of the <clears throat> coefficient corrector for magnetic compass. Okay, so what is compass adjustment? It's the method of analyzing and compensating for the deviating forces of vessel's magnetic compass. As we all know, deviation, okay, from the term deviation, uh, we've discussed earlier, uh, earlier weeks ago, it is the error caused by the ship's magnetism, okay? So magnetic compass should always align steadily to the Earth's magnetic field, pointing to magnetic north, of course. I'm being interrupted by the students uh, joining. However, still electronic instruments or equipment and even the type of cargo carried can cause the compass needle to point away or deviate from the magnetic north. Compass adjustment is necessary to compensate these deviating forces with correctors. So the deviations on principal headings, typically the cardinals. Okay, If you say the cardinals, it is the north, <clears throat> the east, the south, and the west, thirdly. Well, for the intercardinal are those northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest headings. Why are we talking about this cardinal and intercardinal points? Because these are the points or the headings that we will try to head okay, or steer the vessel into for us to determine the deviation and observe both gyro compass and magnetic compass to determine the deviation and the deviation table afterwards. <clears throat> Correctors may be permanent magnets or soft irons, <clears throat> which are placed adjacent to compass. This creates equal but opposing magnetic fields, thus nullifying the deviating fields around the compass, enabling it to align correctly. Now, the Earth's magnetic field can pass through the compass without being deflected out of its normal path. Okay. How to correct and adjust the magnetic compass? Magnetic adjustment. The magnetic compass, when used on a steel ship, must be corrected no? for the ship's magnetic conditions that its operation approximates that of a non-magnetic ship. Ship's magnetic conditions create deviations of the magnetic compass as well as sectors of sluggishness and unsteadiness. So we correct and adjust this magnetic compass by putting some magnets. Okay, kapag nag-adjust tayo ng magnetic compass, we use these magnetic correctors. Okay? And these magnetic cor correctors are composed of various uh, uh, magnets. It's like we have the soft iron magnets, we have the healing magnets, spherical spheres. We have those. Okay? And it, and some other some uh, one of the magnets also is uh, connected with a chain. Okay? So let's move on to that. Now, this is what you call the binnacle. Binnacle, what is a binnacle? That is the magnetic compass on top of the monkey island. Okay? It is a cylindrical container made of non-ferrous materials that houses the different components of the magnetic compass and that as a whole. Earlier, wood was used for the construction of the binnacle. The compass bow is housed in the top part of the binnacle, whereas the middle part is accessible through a door housing the corrector magnets or the magnetic correctors extending to the projector towards the forward. Binnacle have been in, utilized since, since historically 1700. Over the years though, several adjustments and technology binnacles have been carried out to suit the developments in the vessel's building technology. Okay? The instrument consists of a round stand, a pan, 
which a plinth is mounted. Separate divisions constructed store the compass and other navigational equipment on the plinth of the binnacle. A ship's binnacle is positioned right before the helmsman line of vision. Okay? So it means to say wherever the helmsman is standing, the binnacle or the scope of the magnetic compass is aligned through him. Why? Of course, in case the gyro compass fails, he has to steer by the magnetic compass. However, nowadays, we even have satellite compass. So even if both, both compasses, such as the magnetic compass and the gyro compass fails or malfunction, then we still have the satellite compass. This satellite compass, it is just plug and play. Okay. However, the installation uh, takes uh, takes the the technical part from the engine room because it involves welding and everything. Okay, you have to create a permit. But the equipment, if you buy that, you just plug and play. It will give you a monitor and it has a satellite uh, installed on on the Monkey Island as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> wow. Well, we go back to the ship's binnacle. The compass and all other navigation equipment are safeguarded with a binnacle, making it easy for the steersman to observe and steer the vessel accordingly. For this purpose, binnacles have always been constructed to come up to the ways of steersman handling the vessel. <clears throat> now, what are the parts of the binnacle? You can see there, gentlemen and ladies, we have the flinders bar here. And we have these spears. This is what you call spears or spiracles, uh, spiracles. Huh? And the gosing compensating coils. We have the compensating coils. Healing magnet tube. This healing magnet tube is chain. Chain. It, uh, it is connected with a chain. Okay. <coughs> and then we have the B magnets. When you say B magnets, it is the four and a half magnetic trace okay it is in the four and a half magnetic trace it means it adjusts the four and a half while for the c magnets it is the outward shape magnet trace okay however this model is quite old nowadays it, it looks much different okay and it looks much simpler but it has a better function uh, than this historical magnetic compass <clears throat> so let's repeat finders bar quadrantal spears healing magnets at worship magnets and then the four and a half magnets so what is the flinders bar it's a soft iron corrector vertically placed in the four and a half part of the binnacle depending on the extension of the superstructure area above or forward of the binnacle the length of the bar may be changed during adjustment of the compass Quadrantal correctors are two soft iron spears fitted in brackets on either side of the binnacle. Again, the distance between the quadrantal correctors can be altered during adjustment of the compass. <clears throat> Correcting and adjustment, adjusting a gyro compass. Okay, for the gyro compass, gentlemen, it is much easier. It is electronic. So you just have to press it, okay? In reality, you just have to press it, synchronize, okay? And then it will synchronize. Because uh, some other vessels have only one gyro compass. Uh, with that, if you only have one, however, you have a lot of repeaters. You have in the center of the bridge, and also you have in the port side bridge, and also on the starboard side bridge. That means, and also one in the emergency steering room, okay? in the steering room so that concludes four okay typically you have four repeaters and your main is just one some other uh latest latest built vessels they they have two gyro compasses okay so if the gyro compass one fails they still have gyro compass two but they still have the same repeaters one on the middle of the bridge port side, starboard, and in the emergency steering room, okay? Uh, this is a typical or a common look of a gyro compass. <clears throat> Probably this is in the steering gear room, okay? All right. 
So, uh, probably some of you are saying, Sir, what compass are we going to use for the steerage? Okay, the answer is the it's the gyro compass because it gives you true north or the true direction. Okay, it gives you the true direction. However, if it fails, you have the magnetic compass because magnetic compass works on magnetism only. It doesn't involve uh, any electrical function. Gyro compass. However, uh, functions by electric. <clears throat> okay, you can uh, you can just read on the operating principles. Uh, the form of gyroscope is spinning wheel mounted so the direction of its spin axis has universal rotational freedom. Okay. And parts of the gyroscope are the following. You have the wheel, the axis, inner gimbal, inner pivot, outer gimbal, outer pivot, and then the base. Okay, it shows there that circular, circular line shows the apparent motion of the axis of a gyroscope around the pole star in the absence of a pendulous mass. The addition of the pendulous mass, lower drawing, converts the circular motion into an ellipse. The ellipse can then be dumped out, and then the gyroscope becomes a gyro compass pointing to true north. Okay, there's a gyroscope axis okay, with pendulosity and dumping. And also without, okay, it goes vertically. So, yan yung explanation, explanatory diagram niya. References are the following. You can show on the screen. And these are uh, the coefficient corrector for magnetic compass. Okay, we have the coefficient alpha. Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo, and also the healing coefficients. Okay, so this is the table uh, for the coefficient corrector for whichever corrector you would like to use on certain heading. <clears throat> so compass headings uh, of maximum deviation, same on all for Alpha. For Bravo, it is ninety degrees and two seventy. If you are heading that uh, for semicircular 000, 000 degrees and 180, it's Charlie. For delta, it is the intercardinal. You have the 045, 135, 225, and 315. And for the quadrants, okay, cosine for the easterly coefficients, it's uh, true north, uh, true east, true south, and true west. And for the healing, of course, uh, it's 90 and 270. Okay. 90 and 270. So if you have any errors on those headings, okay, <clears throat> this this table, this uh, on the one, two, three, four, five, on the fifth column, that's the correction for such errors, okay? Appropriate or tabulate kung saan yung coefficient na kailangan mo or you need on that certain error. Check methods and calculations, check alignments, rare, arra rare arrangement of soft iron rods. So this that is for the alpha. For the Bravo, for enough B magnets, Flanders bar, forward or up. Charlie, art worship magnets. Yun yung magnets na adjust mo. Those are the magnets that, that you need to correct or adjust or even add magnets. <clears throat> Flanders bars for port or starboard. For the delta, spears on appropriate axis, outward ship for D for enough. Okay, and echo spears on appropriate axis, port forward, starboard aft, starboard forward, and port aft. Healing magnets, uh, I've already told you, it's you are if you have errors for 9 p.m. to 7 p.m. Okay, now we've got the deviation curve. After you, okay, actually, before, before. <clears throat> Before you are going to adjust your magnetic compass, you should first take gyro error. Wherever you are, you, you are probably at sea, you are probably bird. There's a method for correcting the 
magnetic compass and determining the deviation table. Uh, if you are at sea, okay, you have to determine your gyro error. It is probably by celestial. Okay, you can do that. And then afterwards, after you determine your gyro error, so probably it's uh, 0 0.2 or something, 0.3. It shouldn't be more than 0 0.5. Okay, degrees. It shouldn't be more than 0 0.5 degrees. Now, uh, with that, you have to steer your compass. Steer those cardinals and intercardinal headings. And for each heading, you have to maintain it for a two minutes. And then you read the, the difference. You read, uh, you write the readings for your for both of your gyro and then magnetic compass. And then with that, you have your magnetic error. And of course, determine the variation. What is variation? I've already discussed in our earlier weeks. Variation is the error in your magnetic compass caused by the Earth's magnetism. Wherever you are, variation varies. Okay. Well, for the deviation, of course, that will be the remaining. Uh, if you contrast and compare magnetic error and then the the variation, you will get that deviation. And with that, this will be the deviation table. Okay. So if you see here a ship's heading, there is a north, northeast, east, southeast, south, southwest, west, and northwest. They have, or we have steered this, this courses. Okay. So meaning to say, if we have steered these courses for a couple of two minutes, then we record how much is the difference. And that is the magnetic error. Okay. Compass best, west, compass least, east. After that, after that, of course, we have determined the variation. Okay. We compare and contrast, magnetic error, and then the variation, we get the deviation. So at the end. And then we put it in the graph. Okay. If we input here, this is an Excel sheet, probably it will have a dot like this. Understood? Class. Yes, sir. All right. All right. If you see here the correcting record, okay, on the left part of the division table, there is a correcting record, meaning to say there's a before adjustment and then the after adjustment. So the settings first was like this, okay, was under the column before adjustment. Afterwards, the ba umikot, uh, umikot yung vessel, okay, they ha we have steered our course all the way, all, all the cardinals and the intercardinal headings. We have determined that the deviation is more than five degrees. If the deviation is more than five degrees, we need to adjust our magnets. So they have adjust, okay? They have adjust and they have placed it like this, okay? Uh, those magnets are of different types, okay? Uh, I've already told you earlier in my, earlier in our presentation. So they on the Flanders bar, there are three pieces of magnets, two pieces, one piece, four and up, whatsoever, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then after you put or you adjust, you need to steer again all the cardinals and the intercardinal headings. So what happens? We have a delay with our uh, to our destination and delay with our ETA or the estimated time of arrival. But if you are the master, it doesn't matter. What matters is the safety of the vessel. If you have a good compass, that means you are steering properly. So that's what are, that's what matters most. Okay, the master has the overriding authority with everything. <clears throat> All right. And those are the references for this uh, subject matter. Any question, class? Any question? None, sir. All right. If there's none, uh, let me just take our attendance. And uh, on our week seven module, kindly please take the quiz. Okay. And I will see you again tomorrow morning. All right. Hello. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And for your information, uh, for your
for your information, 